Hello, we are live. Yes, once again, um, it is Holly Holiday with our weekly um, Real People Elected series. Um, it is the uh, post Christmas edition. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that we did this. My hair is looking a little crazy. It's okay, though. Um, it's winter here and I've got hat hair, but it's all right because we're going to just keep it going. Uh, the main thing that I want to talk about today is to pick up on some of the things that we discussed last week. Um, first of all, last week, uh, and thank you for all of the feedback. We had amazing numbers of people watching, which was wonderful. Um, last week, we really focused in on uh, what to do when you're deciding to run. Um, and it's still part of phase one of the get ready, uh, what I call the get ready phase. Um, just a little bit and talk about why I started to this series on real people elected. Um, so I've been working in politics for a really long time, and a large part of that has been motivating, encouraging, and supporting um, candidates who are people, really, because before you're a candidate, you're a regular person um, who have the interest of the community at heart and who really want to make a difference um, in what's happening in their neighborhoods, maybe in their schools, in their cities, towns, uh, counties, so forth state even. Um, and the truth is, is that the more perspectives that we have in government, at least I believe this, then the more the government represents uh, who we are as people, uh, both individually and collectively. Um, so the Real People Elected series is not about necessarily Democrats or Republicans. It's really just about people, real people, who are interested or have considered running for office. And one of the biggest barriers to running for office is understanding what one needs to do to get ready. Um, and so uh, last week, my first video, that's what we talked about is what you need to do to get ready. And this week uh, we're talking um, about still in the get ready phase about knowing your district. But before we get to knowing your district, I wanna start with uh, what you do um, when you decide to run. So this was really last week's video, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it this week, uh, but I do want to rehash it just in case uh, this is your first time seeing us or joining us. Um, so in phase one, there are essentially four big pieces. There are deciding to run, you know, piece number one, which we discussed last week, knowing your district, which is number two, uh, knowing the rules, and then finally research and training. So this whole series is about training, so that may seem a little weird, um, but those are the three, uh, I'm sorry, four steps that I recommend when you're thinking about getting ready to run. Ideally, um, you would do that, this get ready stage, anywhere from 18 to 11 months before the election happens. However, you might be getting ready much for a much earlier time period, as much as two years, maybe even three years, because this get ready process takes as long as it takes. Some people get through it in 30 days. Some people take their time and really explore it over time because there are things that you need to be doing to get ready, and sometimes those things just don't take, uh, they take a little bit longer than we might think. So um, things to think about when you're deciding to run. So the first question and the most important question um, is why you would run. Uh, that's important. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but that becomes the number one question that you get asked once you start announcing to people. So understand why you run. Secondly, um, do you have the support of your family and friends? Super important. Candidates take uh, running a campaign and being an elected official takes a lot of time. So it's important for you to understand that. And that leads to question three. Do I have the time to participate in a campaign? Um, which I say you should estimate at a minimum 30 hours a week and more as it gets closer to the election. And then number four, can I manage my financial responsibility? during the campaign. So there's a lot more information that I provide around all of that stuff um, in the first video, 
But let's assume if you're looking at this video, or even if you haven't, that in this video, we're really going to focus in on knowing your district. So what does that mean to know your district? Well, part of deciding to run for office is deciding what position you might seek. And you need to make sure that you have the following. So um, for the most part in this series of Real People Elected, I'm not going to be dealing that much with federal races unless I get a question on it. Um, but let's assume for the purposes of these conversations that we're talking about local races. Local races include school board, could include city council, county council, county commissioners, state representatives, state senators. Um, these are races where you still um, live at your house. Um, they tend to be part-time in nature, which means you are an elected official, but you may also be um, still maintain a job, a career, or a business, or a family. Uh, maybe if, if you're not working and you take care of the home, or you may have caregiving duties. But the point is, is that these jobs tend to be more part-time. Um, if you're running for a position like mayor or governor or uh, Congress, um, or senator, United States senator, these positions tend to be more full-time, and so some of this information would need to be tweaked just slightly. Um, so know your district. So one of the things is you don't want to run for a position that you really don't know anything about. And so it's important for you to research and understand what exactly does this position do. So let's take, for existence, uh, let's take, for example, um, a school board race. So school, most, most seats, uh, there are a set number of people that vote for you. So um, it's important that you understand what are the roles and responsibilities of that position. Um, that's really important because, uh, like, for instance, if you are running for school board, while you may be very well-versed on educational issues, are you also well-versed on budget issues? Because a big part of what any school board does is manage the school district's budget. So you might want to bone up on, um, you know, what is what kind of budget does the school board manage? What are the biggest expenditures for those budgets? Uh, what are some of the budget challenges? Um, things like that. So you may be a person who really has a passion for education and really wants to help the kids, um, but do you also have the understanding of what habits in a budget? Um, so those are the kinds of things that you may want to think about when you think about running for an office. Um, this is going to be the same whether it be with the city, whether it be with the county, whether it be with the state. Um, so understand what are the exact roles and responsibilities of the position that you seek. Um, you know, depending on most uh, legislative bodies, in addition to just serving in the council in the round, as you might think of it, um, you also have the opportunity to serve on committees and subcommittees. Um, you'll have the ability to introduce legislation. Um, you may even have the responsibility of hiring a small staff that helps you. Um, so these are all things that you need to kind of think of and be aware of when you're thinking about what are the roles and responsibilities of this position and how am I going to be the best person in the race to represent um, my district in those roles and responsibilities. Um, and if you think there's a place or an area in which you're lacking, this get ready phase is a perfect opportunity for you to kind of dig in and figure out how you might bone up on some skills. So I'll take one of the obvious ones, which is budget. Um, you know, every, um, every budget is available to the public. Uh, and so if you're running for a particular office, city, if for instance, and you're running for your own, your uh, hometown city council, then maybe what you should do is review the budget. Um, take some time to read through it. Um, if you have problems understanding it or you have questions about it, which I'm sure you will, and you will even as a council person, um, then think about who some of the resources might be um, for you to sit down with to kind of give you a little tutorial on how things work. There is no shame in asking for help or seeking information, and in fact, it will make you a better candidate in the long run.
Um, so then number two is, you know, choose an office that best suits your interests and talents. Um, for instance, if you are really interested in education and you've been passionate about education your whole life, then maybe the place for you to start your political career is at the school board level. Or perhaps you've been passionate or you're really concerned about um, things that are happening in your neighborhood. Uh, maybe you're looking for there to be a speed bump in your on your street because uh, there's a lot of traffic and you've been concerned because there's new development coming in and there's not going to and you're worried about green spacing or maybe you're worried about places for kids to play or maybe you're worried about how it just will impact impact the integrity of your neighborhood. These issues tend to be issues that are handled at the city council level. Um, in some cases, the county council level. Um, maybe what you're really concerned about is sort of overarching issues like health care and how things are funded through the state. Um, these are things that are handled generally by the state legislator, and so that may be a good place for you to run. And there isn't a magic bullet on which you but you should definitely consider the seat that best suits your interests and talents initially. And you may find that once you're elected, that that actually includes other seats as well. So be strategic. Okay, so let's assume we've identified a few places that we have some interest in running. The next thing that we need to do is figure out who lives in our district. Why is that important? Well, these are the people who are going to vote for you. Um, and the best way to do this is our next step, which is get a map of your district from the Board of Election. The map will show you the legal boundaries on which your district is contained. Um, and you can use this to figure out what people live actually in your district. You would be surprised about where those actual district lines uh, lie. In fact, I've had uh, over the years seen many redistricting um, things uh, happen where, um, for instance, a city council person draws a district line and they draw it right down the middle of the street um, to make sure that their seat is in one district versus another district. So there isn't always a uh, logical reason for why a district line begins and ends where it ends. A lot of those lines are drawn in a very politically motivated way. Um, but whatever the case may be, for the purposes of your election, you don't have control over where the lines are yet unless you get elected. Um, but for right now, what you have control over is understanding where the lines are and who lives where you live. Now, finding out who lives with you live is probably one of the most important steps of the get to know your district piece. And the reason that that's so important is because these are going to be the people who actually vote for you. Now, most races are district races, which means only those people living in that district will vote for you. Some races, and you may choose to run for one of these races, are what they call at-large races. At-large races means that everyone in the geographic area or city-defined area run for you, so or within the whole complete district area. So, for instance, um, perhaps you live in uh, a school district, um, and you're in the school district of Daisy Fair. Um, well, in Daisy Fair School District exists within the city limits of uh, Freedom City. But also within the city limits of Free, uh, Freedom City, you may have Daisy Fair and you may have a second school district called Lollipop Land. Well, you live on the Daisy Fair side in the Daisy Fair School District. And so if you're running at law, and that school district is then divided up into five separate and distinct districts. So you probably live in one of those districts, right? And so perhaps you're running for the Fairyland District 1 school board. Well, another option could be if that school district has at-large seats, you might be deciding to run for the Fairyland uh, City uh, District uh, at-large race, which means that you not only have the people in District 1 vote for you where you live, but you have all of the districts voting for you. All five districts have the ability to vote for you. And so, again, that's a big 
a little simple example of why it's important to get the map and find out who lives uh, in that district. Because if you're running district wide, you not only need to know who lives in the district that you live in, which in our example is district one, but you're gonna need to know the people who live in districts one, two, three, four, and five. Um, knowing who lives in the district help you because those are going to be your voters. Uh, these are going to be the people that vote for you. And so you want to get out and start talking to them and introducing yourself and making sure that you not only understand um, some of their concerns as it relates to the things that are within the control of this position, um, but that you also are able to let them know who you are. Um, most people vote for the names they know. Um, and maybe they don't know them personally, but they know them by association. So name recognition is one of the most important things um, that you need to work on when introducing yourself um, to a campaign. And so we want to make sure uh, that you're doing that um, at all times. Um, additionally, uh, once and, and that's and, and another piece about that, this is um, at making all sure that um, you are uh, know who votes in your district. Um, so all the people who live in your district don't vote in your district. This is a sad but true reality. So what do I mean know who votes in your district? Well, here's what I'm talking about. First of all, there's lots of people who live in your district who just simply don't vote. The biggest group of people who don't vote are the people who don't meet the voter qualifications. Um, and the voter qualifications in most cases are you must be 18 years or older. But there may be other voter qualifications like, uh, for instance, if you're an ex-offender, in many jurisdictions, ex-offenders do not have the right to vote. Um, also, in almost every jurisdiction, in order to vote, you have to be registered to vote. And so another group of people who aren't eligible to vote are people who are not registered to vote. Um, so you have to, so when you're looking at who lives in your district, then you have to separate who lives in your district from who votes in your district. Um, I bet many of you have heard that saying, if you don't vote, you don't count. Well, here's what it means. As a candidate and a campaign manager, what we try to get our candidates to do is to focus on the, in order to win the election, you want to focus your attention on those people who vote. Because those are the people who really hold the power to put you in office. And unfortunately, because we just have a lack of resources in campaigns, we just simply don't or can't afford the ability to talk to just everybody. Um, so we instantly eliminate those people who are not registered, who are not eligible to vote. Um, and the third category, which can be somewhat controversial for new candidates, we also eliminate the people who don't have a history of voting. Because again, in a campaign, your resources are very limited. So I have $10 and I need to talk to 100 people. Um, it's just not enough money to talk to all 100 people. So I'm gonna isolate down to the people who I know are most likely to vote and therefore be the real decision makers in your community. So a real easy way to get involved and make sure that you count in your community is to not only vote uh, when their president runs, but vote every single time they have an election. Because one of the key points here is I'm looking for people who vote in my district, the one that I'm running for, and who tend to vote in the type of election that I have. So I'm not going to be looking for people who are only presidential voters, and I'm not going to be looking for people who only vote for governor. I'm looking for people who are interested in voting and who have a history of voting in my election. Does that mean that you automatically exclude everyone else? Not necessarily, but what it does mean is that I'm prioritizing who to talk to and how often that I talk to them. And it's definitely going to be those people who have a history of voting. All right, well, this is about my time. My phone is ringing in the background, that's so embarrassing. Um, but I do want you to know 
that next week, this time Thursday, we're going to be talking about knowing and understanding the rules uh, to run. Knowing the rules can really uh, make or break any campaign, and too often we rely on other people to understand the race in which we're running. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about what you need to understand um, in terms of knowing the rules. Um, I will be back next Thursday around 3 o'clock to do this video again. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Next week, we'll be talking about knowing the rules. And the week after that, we'll be talking about uh, research and training. Um, as always, I invite you to learn more about Real People Elected um, by joining um, or by liking my Facebook page at Holiday Advisors. Um, in next week also, uh, those of you who are tuning in will get a special preview of a freebie that I'll be offering on the newly launched Real People Elected website, which goes live next week. Yay, I'm so excited about that. Um, and there'll be a lot of resources, tools, um, and things like that. We'll also be launching um, our monthly membership program for people who are running for office or who are campaign operatives who want to have the ability to have access to me one-on-one -on -one and access to some of the many tools that I use um, when running a campaign to sure that those campaigns are run effectively and efficiently. Um, so this has been a whole lot of fun. Um, I did this week's broadcast a little bit differently. Um, I'm, I'm in Kansas City now, but uh, I'll be back home soon. And I just want to um, wish everyone a happy new year. I'll see you in the new year with my newly launched website um, and plenty of free giveaways. Um, so be sure to tune in. Um, just want to uh, remind everyone to like my page, Holiday Advisors, to always be up to date on this series. And we'll see you next week at 4 p.m. Eastern. Have a good new year.